I'm here with Michael Baranovic, uh, and I'm going to ask him about what his thoughts on mobile photo phone photography and Google Glass are. So, uh, Michael, why do you think mo uh, using mobile phones um, is better for shooting street photography than using compact cameras? Um, for me, I wouldn't say it's better. I think it's like anything, it's the tools that you find uh, that work for you. Uh, I've been shooting uh, on phones, uh, primarily iPhones, for the last three years. And um, uh, first s started using it when I was going to and from work, and um, I realized I had a camera on me and I was just snapping away uh, as I was riding my bicycle, uh, not really treating it seriously as a camera. And um, I guess uh, over time I realized that um, I was a little bit more fluid and free with the way I shot and um, I kept being more and more drawn to the streets and um, realised I could be a little bit more um, invisible with, with the phone. Uh, I could, um, I don't know, I didn't have much control at the start so I really had to focus on getting my, my lighting right, getting in the right position and um, kind of removed a lot of distractions. It really became about um, the pure, pure composition rather than the controls of the camera. Obviously over time that's increased and now there's, you can pretty much do anything you want with a phone camera and you can get a lot more kind of um, specific and um, uh, structured with the way that you shoot. But yeah, so it's, uh, it's allowed me to be free and loose with my photography. Uh, I can get rid of my shots straight away, I can take them, I can edit them and then I can send them into the world and I can focus on the next photograph so I don't have to dwell too much on the way that I shoot. Uh, and yeah, I can uh, blend into the world a little bit more than I can with a big camera. Yeah. And also, finally, I, the iPhone lets you touch exposed and lets you um, you feel like you're painting with light, so you can really control um, like very specifically how you want the scene to look on the touch screen, which yeah. isn't possible yet on SLRs. Yeah, well, there's a, I think it's the NEX 6, you can touch expose and touch focus. Can you? So, uh, I'll, have to I'll, have to check that. I'll have to check that out. Um, I, know, I know that Canon had touch, a few cameras have touch focus, I haven't seen touch exposure before. Um, yeah, I've, uh, I've tried a few Androids with claim to have good touch exposure, but it's still not, it's not, still quite, not quite there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. uh, so, how do people react if you like if they sort of catch you taking a photo of them with a mobile phone as opposed to with a compact camera? I think, uh, like, I try and I don't hide too much anymore. The way that I shoot, I'm, I'm quite open and I'm quite clearly taking photographs. I used to be a little more covert, I mean, in certain circumstances, um, having some of the tricks of, uh, you know, being, being able to distract people or being able to be very, um, kind of being able to blend into your scenery isn't advantageous for a certain kind of photography, but um, I'm happy just to kind of frame my shots, go about my business. Most people are okay. Um, it really is dependent on how you present yourself to the world. If you're nervous and if you're like you're trying to hide something that um, is very quickly picked up on by other people and they get that nervous energy from you and then they think they get suspicious. So the more confidence you have in your shooting and that confidence ebbs and flows kind of throughout my life, I go up and down, um, then the more likely you are to be able to get better photos because you put people at ease with your photography. Okay. Uh, I was just thinking have you ever had any confrontations whilst uh, shooting? Uh, I've had one um, confrontation where I was threatened physically, uh, and that was more to do with me not wanting to back down in that situation. So I um, thought he was out of line in his accusations, and I was maybe probably a bit tired and a bit cranky, and maybe even a little bit hungover that day, and um, I wasn't willing to apologize for what I was doing and I uh, didn't like being called names so I was and then it kind of escalated from there so most of the times I do, most of the time I do my best to put people at ease and kind of offer the photograph and explain why I was taking the image but in this case I think a few too many things were um, 
didn't go right and it kind of and that leads to that so um, again it's however you approach it um, but some people just um, get very get very funny about having their image captured and I think that, and, and I think see the world quite pessimistically and it can be difficult yeah, yeah. Um, so what are your thoughts on Google Glass for street photography do you think it could be a good tool good job um, I don't I, I don't know I, I don't I, I I'd say well of course like any technology um, it has to be because um, you're able to um, capture whatever you're seeing in that moment quicker and easier than ever before. So that will translate into another um, extraordinary boom of, uh, of imagery. Um, it, from what I've seen of Google, Google Glass in its current iteration, it's very much just uh, automatic exposure and kind of balanced light so uh, as a recording device it's fine because you're not too fussed about how beautiful things look so you have to look kind of right and kind of representative um, photographers do much more than that in the way that they manipulate the light so um, I'm sure you'll then reach a point where um, kind of wearable uh, cameras will offer far more control in the way that you want to um, perceive the world and I think that's when you get some very interesting stuff happening but I'm sure as soon as I'm sure now that there's people taking amazing photographs and video with Google Glass which are artistic and, and beautiful and they're able to manipulate the technology to suit their own kind of needs that's what happened with the iPhone people as soon as it's available will do things with it that you could never have imagined so, yeah. um, and finally um, there's quite a lot of like controversy with Google Glass, especially with so the fact that you can take photos without people's permission for that, um, and also certainly without consent. So I, I sort of think that's sort of a little bit related to street photography and the fact that you can yeah. take photos. Um, look like anything. If you're in a public place, uh, I I have no qualms about you know, kind of documenting people in, in space. Um, I think if we start to think we're, in, we're extra special or something, we lose something in the turn, in the way that we document history and um, we document uh, or we document the present day to show what it was like. So then it can become a, a, a historical reference point. Um, we're always filmed in the street by surveillance cameras um, by Google um, in their satellites. So if we start to put if we start to self-impose ourselves, it, it, uh, it, it's just it, it's, it's a silly thing to do. So, yeah, you, you know you're going to end up in a lot of people's videos, but that's just the way the world is going. And um, it can it'll be problematic if it's in private space and where there is an expectation of privacy and that's breached. But uh, with the public right, I think it's a free for all. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. I think that's everything. You're very welcome. <laughs>